everyone likes to destroy tanks or planes, but there is a vehicle that destroys enemy teams' will to fight. French plane F4U7 Corsair. It never stops attacking because never runs out of ammunition. The plane has wider than usual secondary load options, four bombs of different weight and four types of rockets. Most of these options are nothing special and comparable to what planes in many other nations have, so I will be reviewing this plane using only one type of secondary load because that's what makes this plane unique. This option is overwhelmingly more efficient than any other available options. F4U7 is able to carry very large amount of rockets, 114. This amount can be enough for the duration of the whole battle, which gives you opportunity to destroy more ground targets than you could with any other plane. In other words, F4U7 carries rockets and they carry you to the top of the leaderboard. Of course, there are pros and cons to everything, and in this video I will try to reveal all that, starting from these same rockets. Snap Type 23 rockets are very low in mass. Accordingly, their warheads cannot have a lot of explosives. It is slightly less than 1 kilogram. But those explosives are not supposed to deal damage anyway. They are designed to create a jet, similarly to any other heat warhead. This allows rockets to reach very huge penetration with a relatively small amount of explosives. They can penetrate 300 mm. At battle rating of this plane, very few tanks can reach such penetration, while you can attack ground targets from any comfortable height or angle and never have problem with that. Though it is a whole different story when it comes to post-penetration damage. Just like the rest of heat ammunition, damage will be dealt in a very narrow cone, in many cases able to knock out one or two crew members. That could become a problem, but not in this case when you have 114 rockets. It is not a big deal even if you need to shoot 20 of them to destroy one target. But that is not always necessary, considering that sometimes one accurate rocket hitting the ammunition rack is all that's required. It gets even easier with hull breakable vehicles. While unlike when using bigger rockets, 1 kg explosions happening near such tanks won't deal enough splash damage, but direct hit most likely will result in hull break. So you can imagine how many ground targets can be destroyed until you run out of rockets. Though even if you have a lot of rockets, you will still run out of them eventually if used carelessly. After all, splash damage is almost non-existent, so only direct hits matter. That will force you to pay more attention to your accuracy. Rocket launchers are located on wings, so projectiles will fly to the right and to the left of your crosshair. Or should I say, Corsair. It is normal in such cases to aim with one side, which means half of your rockets will be wasted. Furthermore, even when aiming with one side, rockets will fire from all three launchers in turns, which will increase their spread even more. So a lot of things considering accuracy are out of your control and sometimes you might need to attack the same target few times until it's destroyed. To increase my accuracy, especially in cases when the plane itself can be sliding sideways, which can be difficult to notice, I usually launch two rockets towards opponents from further away to evaluate their trajectory, and only after making adjustments fire a few more. Sacrificing few rockets is not a big deal when you have so many of them, since accuracy is more important. But that can introduce another problem. When the first rockets explode, they create a cloud of dust that can hide the target from view altogether. Though this way is better than shooting a salvo that would miss completely. On a good note, 600 meters per second is faster than any other rocket found at these stairs so ballistic trajectory is flatter, which helps you to aim when attacking at bigger distance. Which is especially useful considering its battle rating, 
Since plane doesn't meet SPAs with radars, you can feel relatively safe if you stay away from enemy respawn where they usually stand. Since rockets are also easy to use at long range, when there are no other targets left, you can even try to attack SPAAs by launching a salvo from a safe distance, especially if that's a hull breakable SPAA, which is usually destroyed by a single hit. That leaves only one type of vehicle that poses real threat to this plane. Enemy planes. They won't simply stand on respawn. They will come and get you, and quite easily. The better you deal with ground forces, the worse are your flight characteristics. F4U7 is not an exception to this rule. Furthermore, unlike planes that can quickly drop bombs and then focus on air targets, you carry these launchers throughout the whole match, which negatively affects plane's performance, even when empty. So as soon as you notice enemy planes, try to shoot them down as soon as possible, preferably while they still carry bombs. That's your only chance to get them before you end up in a dogfight. While the situation is not as desperate as when playing famous German Duck, for example, Corsair is still at noticeable disadvantage when it comes to maneuvering with rocket launchers under wings. It can quickly lose all energy after a few sharper turns, and considering that you usually stay near the ground, attacking ground targets, you will never have enough energy. So I often went head-on trying to destroy other planes from very far away before they start firing. F4U7 machine guns are placed on wings, which doesn't help with long-range accuracy, but considering that the plane has almost 1000 shells, missing projectiles is not a big deal. At the same time, four high-rate-of-fire cannons can fire a lot of projectiles in short period of time, and it doesn't take a lot of 20mm shells to destroy a plane. You can be sure that even if you won't have firepower advantage, you won't be significantly behind either. Of course, that is still risky. Corsair has usual for most planes bulletproof glass and steel plates behind the pilot. But when opponents get on your 6, there is even less you can do, so if head-on allows me to get back to wiping out enemy tanks, it is a good option. Overall plane was very effective thanks to huge amount of Snap Type 23 rockets. Usually they are enough for the whole match if used carefully. Even if you respawn the plane very early in battle. When the sky was clear, I was able to be more useful than I ever was with any other plane using usual for these tiers secondary armaments. Even despite the fact that rockets usually take more time and effort to kill opponent than simply dropping bombs on top of them. Though equipping these rockets hits your flight performance, so it also requires you to always keep an eye on enemy plane's spawn area, as the duration of the match can be very short if you miss the moment when someone sits on your tail, because it becomes quite difficult to shake them off. Though situation is not hopeless either, there are many planes that have similar maneuverability as this plane, but none of them can carry so useful secondary armament. I would rate this plane 8 and a half launch pads out of 10. It's one of the best planes for realistic ground battles, mostly because of its performance against enemy tanks. So, if just like me, you fly planes only in ground realistic battles, and research of your plane tech tree is always lagging behind, this might be the best choice to put a talisman, because it's one of the best planes for its battle rating in the entire game when it comes to destroying tanks. If you like to provide close air support in realistic battles, you might also like the whole playlist of reviews of such planes in top left corner, or trust YouTube and check bottom left corner to see which of my videos algorithm recommends for you personally.